Hey everybody, welcome back to Derby Doc. Tommy D, along with my man, Giddy up. the captain. Giddy up, baby. We made it to the Preakness, Captain. What a Kentucky Derby 2023 it was. But we're here to give you our top three picks of the Preakness. Captain, oh, how we doing? We're doing good. We're doing good. A lot of scratches in the Derby. Uh, Mage, you know, lightly raced Colt. Best race of the career. The pace really set up for this horse. And you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm sad that Forte and Skinner and... Practical move and this, that, or, and all the other horses that were supposed to run didn't run. But uh, overall, I thought the, the the pace of the race was very quick, and it's set up for the closers. Yeah, Captain. I mean, if you go back and look at that race, a mage was way back there. Uh, impressive run and, and deserved the win coming down the stretch seven, eight wide and had another gear to get there. Uh, so congratulations to the connections. And if you had it out there, uh, congratulations to the contest. Nobody had the contest, Captain. Nobody had the contest. Uh, the it's still alive. So let's uh, bring it on over to the Preakness, guys. Uh, so make sure if you're not aware of the contest, uh, first, second, and third, put it down in the comments Point below. Two, make sure you're a subscriber to the Hip Horse here. And uh, you can win 50 bucks just like that. $50 American Express card. Right. We give it out to you for picking first, second, and third in the Preakness. It's not that hard. If there are ties, we will draw from the bucket. Hey, here we go. Bada bing, bada boom. Let's get to the race, Tom. Yeah, Captain, to the Derby before we go on. You know, pretty good job, Captain. Not bad. As you, uh, A few scratches on your hand. Your top two horses, uh, Skinner and Forte, both scratched out of, the, out of the Derby. Like you said, a lot of uh, changes to the Derby last minute, but uh, it still made for a good, a good race. Yeah, it left me with two fills, Angel Empire and Kings Barnes. Two out of the tree hit the money. You yourself, uh, you lost Forte, but you did have uh, Angel of Empire and Mange in your uh, in your superfecta. Yeah, so. and the Japanese horse, I think, had a really tough trip there. Might have, might have had a shot to hit the top three there, too. But what a good race. Congratulations, Connections. Enough of old news. Let's get on to, to the next talk. We're talking the Preakness here. Uh, the Preakness 148 from Pimlico down in Baltimore, Captain. Uh, it's we got a field of eight. We got, we got a field of eight. Not too many. Uh, we only got one Kentucky Derby uh, contender showing back up, and that's the winner, Mage, uh, going on for the second jewel of the Triple Crown. The only one coming back from the Derby. Interesting. Okay, Tommy, yeah. what's the field? Yeah, let's take a look at it. It's going to be down in Pimlico, Baltimore, Maryland, guys. This uh, race started in 1873, the run for the Black Eyed Susan. So yellow flowers will be draped over the winner. A mile and three sixteen. so that's nine and a half furlongs, and the purse is one point. Five million dollars. That's a sixteenth of a mile farther than a mile and an eighth, and a sixteenth mile short of a mile and a quarter. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There we go. And so uh, it's going to be starting at seven o'clock, pretty much seven o one Eastern. That's four o one Pacific time. So make sure you get involved. Uh, let's take a look at the field right now. Number one, National Treasure, four to one Morning Line Bay Colt, uh, son of Quality Road, trained by Bob Baffer, uh, was trained by Tim Yachtin. They did switch him over before the Santa Anita Derby with hopes of making the Kentucky derby uh finished fourth in the san Anita derby uh, two and three fourth links behind the winner practical move uh bob baffer putting the blinkers on here he finished third in the sham you know to start the year and then finished third in the breeders cup juvenile as a two-year-old so has the class there johnny v has been aboard four out of five starts bob baffert wants to get a win everyone knows that showing up at the preakness with national treasure putting the blinkers on so making a change there for the son of quality road second to cave rock uh third to forte uh third to reincarnate it just you know the horse right there but he's, he's had to take time off for injuries here a little sickness there bob baffert how much would he like to win this second jewel of the Triple Crown, Tom. You know what, Captain? You might be on something. Watch that Cave Rock race, the the Juvenile. Forte did come on, but he, uh, you know, this Colt battled it out with Cave Rock down the stretch. Forte did get up there. Only finished third, uh, but then if you go back to the last one, Skinner and Mandarin Hero, uh, I, th I think the National Treasure had a little bit more. Maybe the Blinkers help, and I think that Bob Baffert might be doing the old Johnny V. Let's get this horse yeah. to the lead and go. There's, no, there's not much pace in this not race, Not much Tommy. speed, not so much we'll pace. see. Let's go to number two. Chase the Chaos, our longest price of the board, 50 to 1. This Bay Gelding was favorite uh, post time in the California Derby from Golden Gate over a synthetic, synthetic track. Only one career start over the dirt, uh, Captain, here. All starts over the synthetic. This Gelding did win the El Camino Real Derby uh, from Golden Gate in February. 
Uh, Stayed Golden Gate. But when it went in the San Felipe against similar stakes, it didn't do much. So number two, Chase the Chaos. Double reach. On to the next. Big jump. Double reach. All right, number three, the favorite here at eight to five. Well-deservingly, Mays Chestnut Colt won the Kentucky Derby uh, impressively, sitting off the pace. Uh, This uh, very lightly trained Colt finished second in the Florida Derby, two back behind Forte. Uh, Javier Castellano, all those Derby starts, finally gets his winner with... uh, the mage last time, and if you win that, go back and watch that race. What an impressive ride! Uh, Castellano gets mage to the rail, saves some ground at the end, makes a sweeping move to close it out. Uh, but mage going on the second jewel, the triple crown. This is exciting for horse racing, and mage could get it done. We got a chance at a triple crown, and I think we got a good shot this year looking at this field. Look captain. at the formula here first race, January 28th of this year. The horse has had four races. And has won two of them, okay? But here, what, here's what I'm trying to say. Mace is not going to have the pace that he that he had in the Derby. There's very little pace in this race. You've got a short stretch in this race. Uh, I'm telling you right now that Castellano is going to have to be a little closer to the pace if this horse wants to get the win. There we go. Let's go on to number four, Coffee with Chris here. Uh, 20 and one morning line, fifth in the Federico Tesso, Tessio from Laurel. Uh, going a mile and eight there. Uh, against Maryland Breds, nine starts at Laurel, uh, facing a lot of Maryland Breds, stepping up, you know, face tougher here. Uh, the trainer, Selzmar, hot, 29% on 24 starts, uh, but big class jump up. And most of the wins, you know, came in a mile or shorter. Uh, son of Ride on Curlin. That's a reach. On All to right. the next. Let's go to number five, Red Route 1. This chestnut colt, the son of Gunrunner, won 200 k from uh, Oakland last time out for, Stainer, Steve, for trainer Steve Asmussen. Uh, Joel Rosario back aboard after the win there. Uh, Windchill Thoroughbreds are the owners here. Bet down to 3-1, to one, the Arkansas Derby, two starts back. Did only finish six. Uh, second in the Rebel over a, sl- a sloppy track, three starts back. But if you go back and look at this Oaklawn race, which I, I recommend you go back and look at all these uh, runners, especially if you like them. Uh, Red Roots last race, this horse closed like a monster. My only concern, Captain, we talked about it. I don't know how much speed there's going to be in this one. Uh, that race, the Red Route 1 came out of, they're in 22.87 and then 46.95. That's pretty fast. I don't know if it's going to be that fast up front. Uh, but Red Route 1 is going to be one to try to pick up the pieces for Steve Asmussen. Ro- Ro- Rosario had this horse running in the stretch last time out, just like he uh, Torres did two, three back uh, in, in the Rebel. But I'll tell you something right now. This this is a very uh, underleaning exotics play. That's all I can say. Maybe uh, maybe in the try or super on the bottom end. Yeah, the weather, take a look, uh, did pretty well in the, the wet weather. So if there's rain that day, uh, pay attention to the weather forecast, everyone. Uh, number six perform, 15 to 1. Closed last out to win the Federico Tesso from Laurel. Uh, good magic because Chestnut Colt is trained by Claude McGahey. Broke its maiden two starts back uh, on its sixth try, but, uh, you know, one at a mile and a mile and eighth. So once it's, it got a little bit longer, Lynch, who was aboard last time, will be aboard here for the Preakness. So a big run uh, for the jockey Lynch. Claude McGahey, uh, number six perform. Yeah, should uh, you know? I I don't know here. Uh, the very at the very very top end is, is gonna you know fill fill out the superfecta. I don't see this horse being any 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 better than fourth, uh, and he's gonna have to come from the cloud. So uh, not 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 for my money. All right, let's move on to number seven, six to one. Another good magic colt, uh, Dark Bay here. Uh, finished third in the Bluegrass last start. Not much in his three-year-old debut in the Fountain of Youth. Uh, did have success winning as a two-year-old in the Champagne Grade 1. Uh, Chad Brown, Irad Ortiz Jr. gets it. You got Fast Works coming into the race here. Uh, number seven, Blazing Sevens at 6-1. to one, uh, You know, Blazing captain. Sevens had to sit down for a little while because he had a little problem. Uh, they were trying to bring him back strong, but... Um, this is, once again, this is the lower end of the exotic scale for me, Tommy. Hey, all right, let's go on to number eight. First mission, second choice on the board. Morning line five to two. Won the Lexington grade three from Keeneland last start. This Dark Bay, this Dark Bay uh, Colt, uh, son of Street Sense, trained by Brad Cox. Luis Saez, uh, board, two out of three starts, will take the, be in the saddle here. Nice works coming in, into the race, lightly raced, two starts, uh, three starts, two wins, both at a mile plus, so lightly raced uh, Colt here. 
only three starts, but uh, you got to trust Brad Cox and what he thinks about this uh, son of street sense. Very tough to go from a uh, maiden win over to uh, a great, any kind of uh, stakes race, let alone a grade three. The Lexington, uh, the horse was favored in that race. And what I see is that uh, first mission is going to be close to the lead, whereas Mage and a lot of the other horses aren't. They're going to be far off the lead. And if this horse gets the first jump on, on the field, on the pace setter, which I believe is going to be the two or the, two or the four, um, what you're looking at here is this horse is going to get the first jump on Mage. And in that short stretch at Pimlico, maybe a little too tough to catch, Tommy. Yeah, no, I, you know, going back, and this is another one I encourage you to go back and watch First Mission's last race, you know, beat out Arabian Lion, but that was a battle. Uh, also, Disarm, who ran in the Derby, finished third there. But that was a battle between those two uh, Colts up front. And First Mission just had another gear. It looked like Arabian Lion was going to win. Yeah. And, and First Mission just had another that gear on the rail a lot and, there. and wet. Uh, proven a buyers in, in uh, this last start. Nice jump there. So Luis Saez knows how to get done. Godolphin, good stable captain. First Mission, 5-2. to two. Yeah, I like it. That's the field of the Preakness. It's grade one. Uh, the second jewel, the Triple Crown, Captain. Let's give our top three picks out. Uh, and uh, before we do that, make sure you hit that like, subscribe, and ring the bell, guys. Don't uh, forget, if you want a $50 American Express gift card, just put in what horses you like. First, second, and third. You hit it correct. Boom. You got the 50. If there's more than, more than one, we will draw from the box. There we go, Captain. I like it. Okay, let's get to the picks, guys. Uh... It's that time. Top three picks, Captain. What do you say? Well, looking at this race, you got to look at three things when you're dealing with Pimlico. The pace, the amount of horses in the race, and the short stretch. With that being said, I'm going to be leaning on Bob Baffert's horse, uh, National Treasure, uh, to come up third in this race. I think this horse is going to be out on the front lead. I think Johnny V is going to push the button and let him go because there's not much pace in this race. Uh, also, I do like number three, Mage. Uh, I believe the Kentucky Derby winner, the only one coming back uh, for the Preakness in this race, uh, would be would win here rather than win in Belmont because of three races in five weeks. Um, so I'd figure if Major is going to win, it would be today. And then, but my top pick in this race is going to be number eight, First Mission. Like I brought up, I feel this horse is going to be right in the catbird seat, turning for home, and just. Whole sway in the stretch over Mage and National Treasure. 831 for a ton of fun at Pimlico, Tommy. All right, number three on my list, Captain. I have Red Route 1, 10 to 1 morning line. This chestnut colt, son of Gunrunner. You know, it's race that it did at Oaklawn. Impressive, uh, you know. Uh, turn of foot there at the end. If this uh, Colt could stay closer to the pace, which I think Steve Asmussen is going to be training, and Joel Rosario, who was aboard last time, keep the Colt a little bit closer. Uh, and if he does that, Red Route 1 has a chance, I think, to, to hit the trifecta and maybe have a chance here. Uh, number two, uh, I'm going to go to uh, first mission, Captain. You know, I know it's your top choice. Won the Lexington Dice. You go back and watch that race uh, once again. Beat an Arabian Lion. Very nice. Had another gear. Looked like Arabian Lion was going to go walk away with it and uh first mission another gear brad cox louis saez one of those jockeys you just want to have aboard yeah. your colt here uh gonna get the has a really good chance to get the job done and and beat the kentucky derby winner uh my last and final one guys as you might guess I, i'm gonna go with number three mage guys uh taking a look at this field much softer than the the kentucky derby uh, only horse to come back out of the Kentucky Derby. So showing you how taxing these races are, Captain. Uh, so he's going up against some fresh shooters, a little bit fresh, uh, a little bit more rest. But this Chestnut Colt won the Kentucky Derby pretty impressively. You go back and watch that race, got to the rail, saved some ground, and then coming around the stretch, it went seven, eight wide, and it, it had foot to get past everybody. Uh, Angel of Empire was coming. But I think with the distance here, I think this is no problem for Mage to get it done. Uh, you know, Javier Castellano, you know, so excited to get his first Kentucky Derby win. Uh, Gustavo Delgado, the trainer, getting a lot of hype. And I think well-deserved. I think Mage uh, has a really good chance here. You know, the son of good magic. So that's going to be my top cho choice here, uh, the Preakness guy. I, 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 I like Mage a lot. I'm re rooting for Mage. I just don't think... Uh, Mage is going to have enough pace to set it up for this race. That's all I'm trying to say. I think Mage finishes second, and I think first mission on the upswing also, like Mage, 
you know, only the fourth race, made his fifth race. But you've seen the new formula, Tommy, right here, what you're going to do if you want to get your horse to the Kentucky Derby. You're going to wait till he's a three-year-old, and you're going to come out so the horse doesn't get hurt. And I, I, I tip my hat to him because they did a great job with Mage and, and with and with uh, Private Mission, First Mission. So uh, going forward, that's our picks of the week, Tommy. Yeah, do you know, Captain, you're on to something similar to the Justify. We've seen a lot of these horses not running as much as two-year-olds coming out as three-year-olds with uh, guns blazing. So the Preakness, 148 is going to be a good one. The run, uh, the jewel, you know, uh, second jewel, the triple crown. Hopefully Mage gets there because if it gets it, it always makes the third, uh, third, you know, Jewel even more excited with He's the Belmont. Be, three he'll be one away. tired horse if he gets there. Yeah, and don't forget that contest uh, we talked about. Free Amex card. Hit like, subscribe. Make sure you're a subscriber. Only way you could win, too, guys. And uh, put down in there. You got any questions, comments, throw it down in the mix. We love when you guys get involved. We appreciate every single one of you. My man, anything else you want to say? Giddy up, baby. Go to the whip. He's ready, guys. Go I to the whip, He's baby. ready. Go to the whip. We appreciate you watching the Hip Horse. Full sway. Special edition Preakness episode. Thank you so much. We'll see you. We'll see you next time for the Belmont. Give you up.